Like almost every other Darren Aronofsky work, there has been a lot of debate around the merit of his latest release, The Whale, but I feel like this time it leans more towards the criticism, which is way harsher, while the people who praise it do so with less enthusiasm if we compare it to Black Swan or Mother, for instance. After watching the movie and going into it with high expectations, because I do like the director's works, and also because I was really impressed by all those clips and edits of Brandon Fraser's phenomenal performance, I admit it's still felt a little bit underwhelming for me by the end and not nearly as powerful as his other works. But at the same time, I could not relate to reviews that completely trashed it because there is still a lot to appreciate in it and they can really see the impact it can leave on the viewers. And so in this video, I'll explain why as well as share my general thoughts on the movie. And you can stick around if you're interested because I won't be including any spoilers. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, The Whale follows the story of Charlie, an English teacher who works online and suffers from severe obesity and congestive heart failure. Through an exploration of his backstory, we'll also learn that he is separated from his daughter and desperately tries to reconnect with her and in a way redeem his mistakes from the past. Now the first expectation you'll probably form based on this synopsis is that it's going to foreground characterization a lot more as we're really focused on Charlie. learning about his daily struggles, his past, and most importantly his internal conflicts, which will be the driving force of this story, if you may. And so, to be fair to this film, giving the lead role to Brandon Fraser, who delivered an outstanding performance, was a smart move. Because if this movie is solid in any capacity, it could not have been without a talented lead given that the biggest portion of this film sheds the light on this one character and covers only the space that he occupies. It is also more like a character study that delves into his psyche and deepest struggles, things that happen more on the inside and would be more fitting into written forms of storytelling, and so it is not an easy task to translate into screen. That's why Brendan Fraser's Oscars nomination makes perfect sense, as he really succeeded to get me emotionally invested in the character of Charlie from the get-go, mainly because I could feel the vulnerability of the character and its complexity. It truly felt like a person that had a lot going on, and that is communicated subtly from the facial expressions, the interactions with other characters, and especially how the lines were delivered. The effort here was was noticeable. You can see that the actor made a sincere attempt to do this character justice, but also without feeling like he's pushing too hard, and that helps in genuinely connecting with him. Was that emotional investment maintained all the way to the end? I would say yes. The final scene was exceptionally powerful and moved me despite feeling underwhelmed by the movie at that point. Part of that is because, while the performance was good, I didn't feel like the characterization was powerful enough. Yes, it's a character that you feel for and empathize with, again, because it's a raw depiction of a vulnerable, complex character. But we only get that from the acting and what we basically know about him from the synopsis and the opening scene. And so yes, we do get emotionally invested, but that's like, a natural given. That's not something that we develop over the course of the film. I would say it solidified the image that we've already had of the character, yes, but to take it to the next level, we maybe could have explored enough of Charlie to make our view of him shift in some way. I feel like that's what was missing for it to stick more with me. To explain it best, I did see some of the most powerful scenes from this movie before watching, and they did move me on the spot without any context thanks to the performance. What I expected was that those performances would gain a lot more meaning and power when I watched the movie but my experience differed only so slightly. I basically empathized with him as much as I did prior to watching the whole movie. That wasn't really a distinctive character arc, if you want. Then again, who's to say there should have been? This may be just how it was intended to be, a brutally real depiction of the character and nothing more. When it comes to the second main character, Ellie, Charlie's daughter, played by Sadie Sink, I truly don't know what to say. I mean, I don't really doubt that she nailed the role that she was given, and that she was kind of done bad by the writing, but I don't even know if I can blame the writing on this one. The character felt a little over 
over the top to me, yes, but that also should make sense because this is a teenager, so I don't really know. I always get confused when it comes to teenage characters. Another character named Liz, Charlie's nurse and best friend, was played by Hong Chao, and I think this one worked really well for me thanks to the acting and the writing of the character. I admit I was truly floored, and if anything, I would have loved to see more of her. I think it's safe to say that Hong Chao carried this movie along with Brandon Fraser, especially because of how powerful the dynamic between these two characters was. It was really refreshing, and I would argue if that relationship had more space in the film, it would have been even more powerful. And we have Thomas, a young missionary that visits Charlie to introduce him to God and save him. I don't really have much to say about the performance or the writing of this character because I'm not really sure what his ultimate role in this film was, other than some powerful interactions that I would say served to strengthen the character of Charlie more than anything, but beyond that, things may have flown over my head. I think an insight on the characters can inform you enough on the plot, given that it's a story that heavily depends on the characters and so there is basically none. I think that's part of why I felt a little bit underwhelmed by the end. Arnofsky's works are always focused on characters, yes, but these characters are still often utilized to move an actual concrete story that takes on pretty intense journeys that really have a lot going on. When in The Whale, we don't get much of a journey really, we technically start the movie and end it in the same place. In a way that comes to no one's surprise, it only confirms what we could predict and clearly see throughout the entire movie. And that's another nitpick I have. This movie is not very subtle about its messages or plot points. Everything was just easily handed to us. Again, who's to say it should have been in the first place? It is very likely a choice. And if you've seen the movie, you can even argue that that's actually the point. But then again, it's a choice that doesn't necessarily work for everyone. I think how the themes were handled in this film can also inform a lot of what you think of this movie. How much it speaks to you will probably depend on your background and how you relate to the characters, and there are various ways in which you could. There's mainly a discussion about fat phobia and eating disorders, but also grief, depression, parenthood, and queerness, all of which are really touchy subjects to handle, and so naturally it's one of the most divisive aspects of this movie. I don't think I have a right to judge in this case, and so I cannot really comment on that. One last thing I don't feel very strongly about is the cinematography. There's nothing much going on in this area, and so I'm kind of neutral about it. Maybe leaning a little bit more to disappointed if we think about the score that I felt was not necessary during the emotional scenes of this film. And it absolutely doesn't help that I was already feeling that the movie lacked subtlety, so it's hard for the music not to come across as a manipulative way to guide us as to how we should feel, when it definitely didn't need to with some such good performances. As far as the lightning and the camera work go, I really don't have much to say. Nothing particularly captivating, but we're talking about a film that entirely takes place inside an apartment, and so the framing and the dim lightning seems like a reasonable move. Now, do I recommend The Whale? I would say yes. I won't guarantee that you'll like it. It all depends on your relatability with the characters and how much you can agree with the writing choices, but you're still very likely going to come out of it feeling something, that's for sure. It is heartbreaking, it is moving, and the performances are undeniably good. That's it for The Whale. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts down below in the comments. Did you like the movie? Did you hate it? And if you haven't seen it yet, I hope this video helped you decide. Now I've got to say goodbye and see you in another video.